let's do an example where we think about curvature and its impact on the potential and the electric field. So I have three spheres here which are conducting and it's connected by conducting wire. Now note that here I say curvature, but if you think about these spheres, what you probably see is that they have three different radii. So curvature obviously relates to radii. The radii is usually what we talk about when we're talking about spheres. So the first question, well, there's two questions here. One is how do the potentials outside these compare? And then the second is how do the strengths of the electric fields outside these compare? Well, for the potentials, think about the fact that these are all conductors and they're attached by a conducting wire. So what this means is if I call this surface having potential V1, well, every point on this wire is also a conductor, so it must also have potential V1. Again, in this case, we're assuming that this is in electrostatic equilibrium, that the rules are going to change a little bit when we start talking about the flow of electrons. So right now, we don't worry about that. So here we can think about at r equals infinity, so really far away, having v equals zero. And so maybe there's a little bit of a charge distribution on these spheres. Well, so if we have potential v1 all throughout this wire, we then also have v1 on this sphere. Okay, well again, we have a conductor, and so we think about every point of this also having v1. And so we get ourselves back over to sphere three, which also has V1. So we see that all are equal when it comes to the potential on the sphere itself. So then we can start to think about electric fields. So we said before that electric fields are bigger when you have a sharper point. Now, none of these are actually points, but this one has a sharper curvature. It's more curved. This one is less curved. So your electric field here, right outside of the sphere, is going to be the biggest. Then we have a slightly smaller electric field outside sphere two. And then we have the smallest field outside sphere three. So does that make sense? Right? So again, this is the, the sharpest. This is has the middle curvature, and so on. So the electric field right outside of V1 is bigger than the second one, is bigger than the third one. Now, what if I want to start drawing equipotentials here? We think about the fact that the potential is the same here. We're not going to worry about the wires for this. The wire makes the equipotentials slightly more confusing, so let's just not consider the wires when we're drawing the equipotentials. It's a big simplification, but it will help. So what will the equipotentials look like around these? So I'm not very good at drawing here on the computer, but let's say that our potential that the spheres are at is actually 100 volts. So maybe the first equipotential I draw is at 90 volts. So they're going to be circles or spheres around our sphere. Now, one thing that I struggled to draw, as you can see, I struggled to draw a circle, is that actually the equipotential is not the same distance from each of these. Since your electric field here is weaker, you actually have to go farther before you have the same change in voltage. So this equipotential is actually closest to the sphere, and this one's in the middle. So our next one is going to be our 80. And again, I'm trying to draw this big and failing a little bit. So this is about 80. But now we also have to think, are these actually going to keep being circles? Notice that this breaks the symmetry a little bit. So this is a little squished here, right? It's actually not quite a circle, more of a, an oval shape. And that the ones on the end actually can pop out to the side a little bit. So it's hard to tell which of these non-circle parts I mean to draw and which ones I don't, but hopefully you're bearing with me. But now note something else that's happening. We're going down as we get away, but we're also starting to get close to equipotentials from the other one. So this is where we can say that the only time equipotentials actually cross is when they have the same, uh, the same uh, 
potential. So maybe this next one I draw here is 70, and it just kind of goes off the page there. So let's say that this one's 70. And now maybe this one actually also becomes my equipotential here. Right? So maybe we actually do have two equipotentials that kind of branch. That's okay. But now I look at this, and I don't think my potential here is 70. So maybe it actually comes up a little bit and then turns around and goes back down. And then again, it's kind of going off the screen. So this whole one here is 70. So note that the reason that that should be happening is that at infinity, we have zero. So don't just assume that we have to have zero potential in between these. It's OK for this to still be positive. The other thing you should think about is as we get further and further away from these, such as once we're down at, say, 10 volts, it will just be one big blob. We'd have to be pretty far away before this whole structure looks like a point charge, but eventually you would be far enough that that would be the situation. So drawing these equipotentials I find to be a little bit easier, and then you can start to try to put your field lines on top of this. Now note that your field lines would actually be starting on all of these and heading out towards infinity since all of these are positive. You don't start with field lines on one and put them on, on the other. Our field lines are just heading away from all of these. So briefly, I've tried to draw some field lines. It's challenging to do this. Like here, this should have actually been at perpendicular, but it doesn't look very perpendicular. So this is one of the reasons why I think field lines can be a little bit harder to do than uh, doing field vectors, because technically it should be perpendicular to every um, equipotential. And I haven't done a great job of drawing that. But you can see that it's actually kind of hard to aim one directly this way because then it has to suddenly turn off. So that's one tricky thing is that once you draw these equipotentials first, you see that certain field lines are going to be harder to draw than others because in a certain region, your change in uh, potential is zero, which means you have no electric field going through there. So that's one way to do this. And note that obviously my field lines look farther apart here than they do over here, which corresponds with the fact that this electric field is stronger.